Now this is beautiful. This is, um, this is the scalp. And here we are, even at the lowest possible power on my scope, I'm trying to get in the focus there, you can't even see all of it in one, in one field. And that's because these giant hairs that go all the way down. So these are called antigen hairs. They're the normal hair that, that are, uh, make up most of the hairs on your scalp. And you can see that these, these blue kind of nodules down here, they almost look like little flames on the end of a candle, if you have a good imagination. Those, uh, those little um, purple things, those are the roots of the hair. That's what's giving rise to the hair. It's growing the hair from, from that from that place there. And those um, in the scalp and near the scalp, the hair um, roots are situated down here in the subcutaneous fat. So most other places on the body, your hair follicles kind of arise in the dermis, but here on the scalp particularly, you have lots of these really large antigen hairs and they uh, have their roots down in the subcutaneous fat. And you can see, we can't, you know, unless we get it really lucky which the, with the way we slice the tissue, you usually don't get to see the whole hair all the way up. So you have to see it kind of as multiple little sections. That hair connects to the surface, we just can't see it it's not in the plane that we're sectioning through the tissue. So, um, and then up here you can see where the, where the hair shafts come out or the hair follicles open to the surface and the hair shaft would come out through there. You can see these white sebaceous glands, right? And those make the sebaceous secretion. We talked about that earlier. So let's look a little closer. I think uh, hair, um, hair follicle anatomy is one of the more uh, confusing aspects of a histology, I think, because there's a lot of different structures in there. So here, we'll go down uh, the higher power, and I'm sorry for the line across the screen, that's a scratch on the surface of the slide. Um, it's uh, that diagonal line, it's not real, it's just on the surface of the glass. So here we are, um, this is the, the hair root or the hair bulb, and it's made up of these dark blue cells. This is called the germinative epithelium. These cells are actively dividing, you can see a little mitosis right there. And their job is to grow quickly, and that's, that's why our hair grows, because of these cells way down here at the very root. And then this little pink, uh, this little pink um, papilla invaginating into the ball of the, of the uh, hair root, or the hair bulb, this is called the, um, the hair papilla. And it's made of kind of specialized um, mesenchymal spindle cells, like modified fibroblasts, and there's little blood vessels in there, and that's what gives the um, support and nourishment to the developing uh, hair bulb, okay? And as you go up, you can see that the, the, um, these germinative, or what we call, also we call the blue cells, matricle cells. These matricle cells or germinative cells, they begin to change and they begin to look less blue and purple and a little bit more pink. And that's because they're developing more keratin in their cytoplasm. And what's gonna happen is that these cells will eventually die. The nuclei will go away and what you'll be left with is this compact tube, or not tube, but this compact like kind of cable made out of dead keratin compacted together. And that's what the hair shaft is made of. It's made of all these cells that are dead and packed together. But we can also see that around the outside of these matricle cells that are developing in the hair, we have this bright red, beautiful layer here. And this is called the inner root sheath. And it's got a couple layers, which I don't think are really important to know that the, eventually it will develop a cuticle, a Henle layer and a Huxley layer. Uh, I don't think that those are really that important for most medical students to know at least. And honestly, probably not that important for most pathologists to know. And then here on the outside, you can see this outer layer looks very, very different. It's very clear. It kind of has these very columnar, like tall cells that almost look, some people imagine they look like piano keys. And sometimes when we have a better cut, they do. So that's called the outer root sheath. And it's clear because the cells are filled with glycogen and that glycogen washes away during tissue processing and leaves these clear spaces. And then as we travel up, these layers continue to change and, then, and look different. So here, this is a different hair follicle, but a little bit further up, and you can see that this is very different now. And we're cutting kind of at an angle, that's why it looks like a little oval rather than a tube. This is the outer root sheath, and you can see nice, those nice piano keys along the basal layer. You can see this clear cytoplasm. The inner root sheath now doesn't have those bright red granules, those are called, uh, that we looked at, those are called um, trichohyaline granules, by the way, those bright, bright red granules. Those are trichohyaline granules. Oh, and then look, this is nice. This is a different hair shaft, but you can see that, that those are the, those cells, those blue matricle cells we talked about earlier. They've now like got, gotten to be very pink and they have their nuclei are on their way to towards dying. And so this central structure here is eventually gonna become the whole hair shaft. So again, that's outer root sheath. These three layers here are the inner root sheath. And then this is the, the developing hair shaft. And so we go, we go further up. Now you can see it's kind of fragmented, but let's look closer. The inner root sheath is now just a, a single pink dense layer. The hair shaft, it's kind of broken here, but that it has no nuclei retained anymore. So that's the hair shaft in the middle. This is the inner root sheath right here. This is the outer root sheath that's glycogenated and has those little piano keys. And then there's this little pink layer on the outside that we call the adventitia. It's kind of modified fibroblasts that are surrounding 
the hair shaft. So let's go up a little further on the hair. So here's a nice long cut. The hair is actually missing. It's fallen out of the center during, during processing. Um, hair is a little bit fragile, so sometimes it does that. But as you go up, you can see that the outer root sheath doesn't look quite so clear anymore. Now it's looking much more like the kind of epidermis does. It's kind of pink and has a basal layer and then a more pink layer on the inside. It doesn't have that, that really prominent clearing anymore. That hair shaft, or the hair follicle keeps going up and eventually, even though see the white space here, this is kind of a, a chunk of tissue that was missing from, from when we cut the, the tissue. But you can see that what happens is the sebaceous gland, sebaceous gland drains into the hair follicle. And so that's called the sebaceous duct, this little area here where the sebaceous gland drains directly into the follicle. I'm sorry, the, yeah, the follicle. And then the follicle opens up on the surface and on the surface, you can see that the, the, this portion of the follicle is called the infundibulum. The portion where the, the sebaceous duct drains in, that's called the isthmus. And then this portion up here is the infundibulum. And the infundibular portion of the hair follicle looks just like the epidermis. And we talk a lot in, uh, in pathology about epidermal inclusion cysts or epidermoid cysts. The surgeons call them sebaceous cysts, even though they're not actually sebaceous. What they're lined with is this lining right here. So they really are actually follicular cysts of the infundibulum. They're, they're growing from the infundibular portion of the hair follicle. And they have a lining just like this and that, that flaky loose keratin in the middle. So this basically at the very entry, the opening of the hair follicle, it looks just like the surface of the epidermis. And you can see this little detached fragment here. This is a hair shaft. It's kind of, it's kind of refractile. You can kind of, it kind of floats above the rest of the tissue. It's hard to see because it's fragmented and it's got little bits of brown in it. That's melanin. And that's why our hair has color because we have melanocytes down in that root of the hair follicle that give the hair its pigment. Let's see if we can get another uh, better look at a hair shaft. They're hard to find sometimes. There's a little one there, but maybe there's a bigger one somewhere. That's pretty good. See, here's a hair shaft. So the follicle is the, the outside epithelial layer here that kind of surrounds the hair shaft. And then the shaft is the hair itself that comes out of the top of your head. And again, you can see these little streaks of pigment there. That's melanin. That's what, what makes your hair brown or different colors. And then the rest of the pink of the hair shaft is keratin. It's from those dead matricle cells down in the root that gave rise to this. And that's when you go get a haircut. That's the stuff that's out on the surface that gets cut. And here's another picture of um, a hair root cut a little bit differently. There are the hair bulb. And look at the brown pigment in there. Those are actually melanocytes. Try to get it in focus here. Those little brown um, pigmented cells, those are melanocytes and they have these little branching dendritic processes, these little tiny branches, and they're feeding melanin to all of the matricle cells. And that's why when the matricle cells go up towards the top and die and turn into the hair shaft, the hair shaft has pigment included in it. And again, that's why we have pigmented uh, hair of different colors. So that's how hair works. Uh, it's a little bit complicated and I, I still think it's like one of the last great histologic mysteries for me in the skin. I, I still find hair pretty, uh, pretty challenging. I think we have one other view maybe of a hair follicle here. Let's take a look and see. That's about the same as what we were showing before. You can see the bulb down there at the bottom made of matricle cells. You can see the developing inner root sheath of those bright red granules. And then moving up, you can see the outer root sheath that's made of uh, pale uh, glycogenated cells. And then in the middle here, you can see the matricle cells are now turning more pink and elongated. And so that's actually the, that's called the uh, cortex of the, of the developing uh, hair, hair shaft. And then that's the medulla. So the, the bulb is turning into a cortex, an outer layer and a medulla, a middle layer. And then eventually that will all squish together and die and turn into a hair shaft.